Hey team, welcome back to the Man That Can Project podcast. I just did a Facebook Live on my group. Um, actually, not even on my group, on the uh, on my per- personal page. And as I'm doing this 365 days of uh, Facebook Lives a day, uh, today's topic was something that I was thinking about um, from an event that happened this morning. I saw a dog get run over, which was sad and probably not something that I would want other people to really see, especially if you're a dog lover. Um, But from that event, I was dwelling on it. I was thinking and I was, you know, going through this process of why that event happened and et cetera, et cetera. And I had this moment where I was like, maybe this is one of the reasons why people feel sad. This is one of the, and obviously the event, yes, but bear with me here. It, um the dwelling on the past and continually revisiting that event to work out why us, why did we have to see that, why was I picked on, you know, whatever the, that negative event that's happening in your life that's bringing you sadness, so the more we dwell on it and keep reviewing it in our mind, the sadder we become, which can ultimately start leading to depression, that, that depressed feeling, right? And then, you know, if it's something that we, you know, revisit time and time again over a long period of time then all of a sudden you know we've caused depression in ourselves from an event that's happened and it got me thinking and i'm still thinking as i'm talking about this right now so and this is going to be an open discussion i'd definitely love to um if you've got feedback leave it in the reviews or slide into my uh instagram dms i'd love to have a have a conversation about this because it's it's really interesting to me right now and i have read about this in the past where you know they people whatever articles I've been reading have been like anxiety is just the fear of the future and focusing on um the future too much in a negative light but then also depression is focusing on the past and reminiscing on it too much okay and focusing on those negative events so the more I think about this and the more you know so many of us men and I want to relate this to to the men out there right at some point in our life where you know the majority of men that I've worked with we've had this point where or in a moment where we feel the need to shut off our authentic self and we feel the need to then step up as and live our role in society, the, the stereotypical role where we need to be the provider, the financial provider, okay? We need to be the protector, okay? So as a protector, we can't show any emotion. We need to you know, look after our family. We need to show strength. And as a result of that, we forget who we are and we don't get to be our authentic self, whatever that looks like for each individual, right? We become these hardened men who don't know how to express or share emotion unless it's anger, right? We don't know how to stop and breathe and be present because we're constantly worried about providing and making sure there's you know, enough of everything for our family, we're constantly trying to prove to ourselves and others that we are successful. And you know, generally, that success is in a materialistic manner where it's, we have to have that nice house, we have to have that nice car, even if we don't give a fuck about that. Unfortunately, that's you know, the kind of life that we're building for us. And it, it's sad because if it isn't something that we're chasing or something that we're wanting, we've now got all this debt, or whether it's debt or... You know, we've got all these materialistic possessions around us that don't bring us happiness. And, you know, when we realize, all right, after a while, that doesn't make me happy, we go looking for the next thing, and then the next thing, and then the next thing. And in during that process, the emotions get more suppressed, so we become more resentful, we become angrier, 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 and that feeling of separation, that feeling of being lost really starts to come to the surface and funnily enough you know for for a lot of men this is where that midlife crisis term comes in you know we go through so much and generally you know people's kids might grow up they turn 18 and then we go fuck what next what now is this all that it is is this all that i've been working towards and then we start looking back over our life and obviously, I can't speak from experience in this part. It's just I've worked with a lot of men, um, you know, in that 40 
to 50 year age bracket and this is this is some commonalities that has happened I look back and <clears throat> life hasn't gone exactly how they thought it was going to go and during that process while they've worked hard and they've succeeded some great things and provided for their family they're not happy they don't know who they are as a man they're sick of being angry but they don't know how to express any other emotions because they haven't been allowed to or not that they haven't been allowed to they haven't allowed themselves to so life has become quite mundane it's become so routine and structured and that comes from an emotional place a mental place a physical place a financial place a spiritual place it's become so routine that you know they realize that fuck something's got to change or I don't want to live this way anymore and that that term the midlife crisis is really something that we need to shed some light on because it can happen at any age and I think you know in the environment that I hang around with the people that I hang around I feel like that midlife crisis is happening at a much younger age people are realizing that we don't want to live how our parents have where they've you know followed the system and what I mean by the system is you know go to school get good grades either get a trade or a, uh, a university degree right get your job get in a relationship get a house get married have kids that that system Right, they're realizing that I won't actually be fulfilled from day dot. I want to do something that I believe in and I'll, I'll figure out how to make money from it. I want to hang around good people who share ideas and not you know, just constantly talk about superficial stuff. And it's cool to see because you know, while both sides, and I'm not saying one's better than the other, it depends what's better for you as an individual. For some people, the old school way of doing things is the way to do it and that's completely fine and then for some people the new school way of doing things is the best way to do it so I think it's important to decide which one it is for you and then I you know the reason why I say which one would be the best for you I I would say you know if you were 40 years old now or if you are if you throw another 20 years on top of that and looking back would you look back at your life with not necessarily regret but would be there a, a lot of moments where you look back and go I wish I'd done that differently I wish I'd done that differently because you have the ability and the opportunity and obviously you know if you do have kids and you do have higher expenses and stuff like that obviously that's you know a few more spanners in the work which makes it hard so I and I'm always super thankful and grateful that I don't have um, children I don't have any huge commitments that have have to be thought about in order for me to make a decision but I understand that's obviously where some of us men are so keep that in mind but men wherever you are whatever your current situation you can if you choose find a way to bring some more fulfillment and happiness into your life and a few things I'll share with you in a minute is a few ways that I believe you can do that and you, you know depending on how badly you want to overhaul your life and you know what's important to you it doesn't have to be hugely significant. Um, it doesn't have to be sorry a hugely significant shift in your your life. It just needs to be a shift in your priorities and how you spend your time. Okay, so when we look at um, I feel like I've just gone off at a huge tangent. Bear with me. I will bring this back around to whatever ending I feel needs it. <laughs> um, so. The reason why I went off on that tangent was obviously, you know, I, I believe that some people can make themselves feel depressed by dwelling on the past too much and dwelling on those events, those negative events that have happened in our life. And, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use bullying because bullying happened um, to me. And I think about when I, when I dwell on it, I was like, what was wrong with me? And I used to get bullied for, you know, being, having heaps of veins, which is crazy. I used to get bullied for being hairy, which is also crazy. And a few other things, a high voice and all this other sort of shit, right? So when I think back on that, it makes me upset. It makes me sad because I'm like, oh, I didn't get to choose that, right? That's just fucking how I am as a human. But then I would also, you know, grab other events to support that, right? When I used to get bullied, um for the high voice I still remember the first time I got picked on for having the high voice and this 
chick was coming up to me and mate this would have been grade six obviously my balls hadn't dropped so fair call but I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that whole process yet um and she was coming up to me i was like fuck yeah girl's attention and then she goes can you speak and i was like yeah and then she said huh? and she pointed to her friend she said told you I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you got the highest voice I've ever heard for a boy. You're not a boy. I still remember that. And I was, I fucking still hate that person. I don't really actually hate them, but every time I think about it, I'm like, what a little bitch. And I think about kids today that can be evil, man. Can be evil. But as a result of that, that shut me up. Literally, through high school, through everything, like I would speak around my mates, but if I was in, and you know, I say to people I'm introverted, but the more I think about it, I'm like, Maybe I'm just introverted because I didn't have the confidence to open my voice, uh, open my mouth because I was worried about people, you know, picking on me for my high voice. And I know, you know, lads, listen out there, you probably have had similar experiences and I'm not saying the voice or whatever, but, you know, we've all probably copped some criticism or some bullying in some way um, or you may have given it. Okay, and I'm guilty on both sides of the fence, so I'm not saying I'm um, perfect here. But the more I think on that event, and I could have dwelled on it for ages, and I did during school, but not so much anymore, because I obviously speak a lot on podcasts and always am talking. Um, But if I were to have continued to focus on that, like I did up until probably grade 11, when I was 16, I could have continued attaching future events to that, to support that thing, to support that I shouldn't... um, share my voice and to support that I should be quiet because I'm going to get picked on and what I have to say isn't worthy or how I have to say it isn't worthy. So the point is what we focus on can lead to how we feel. Our thoughts control our emotions. So if you're in a place where you're feeling sad a lot of the time, obviously that, you know, this is, this is what I believe can be one, one factor or one cause, right? If you notice, and if you can have that awareness, and I hope just from even listening to this, if you have that awareness that you're continually dwelling on the past on a negative event that makes you feel sad, if you're focusing on that in a way that, you know, and you're doing it consistently over a long period of time is making you feel depressed, then... I challenge you to start changing that thought pattern. I challenge you to start anchoring something else differently to it. Good morning. How are you? How are you? Really well. I challenge you to change that that thought. And I know it's easier said than done because it might, you know, you might be reminiscing from something in the past over and over and over and over again. And if you've been doing that for, you know, one year, two years, ten years, it's going to be hard because that that thought has probably become a belief. Right? Because it's been going on so long and that can lead you to obviously be feeling sad and or depressed for a long period of time. So rather than trying to say focus on forgetting that thought, I would say focus on something completely different and really have that in the forefront of your mind. And what I tell people to do who really struggle with focus essentially or if something's ingrained is you know, put something as your screensaver. So for example, if you've got a something that makes you look makes you happy in your life whatever that is you know for me it's my partner for me it's um i love exercising for me it's my business um for me it's even doing a podcast for me it's getting to talk to people you know i've got a lot of incredible things that are in my focus that i um get really excited about and that bring me happiness so if i knew i had a significant negative event in my life that was going to consume my focus and make me feel feel shit a lot of the time I would manipulate the game, and what I call the game is life. I would manipulate it to a point where I have, you know, on my screensaver I have my partner, okay? I also have my values, but I have two different screensavers. I would have post-it notes around the house. I would have a vision board, right? I would play uplifting music that makes me feel good. Right? I would have all these things in place because I want to keep triggering my mind to focus on the positive so notice how i say i'm not trying to not focus on the past because if i say don't focus on um that event with that negative event for you so don't focus on being bullied in order to process that you have to focus on being bullied first 
Okay, so rather than that, I would say, what's a significant, uh, you know, an excite, something you've got look, uh, you're looking forward to in the future? I'm getting married soon, or um, I'm going on a holiday soon, or I've got a, a CrossFit comp coming up. You know, something, something like that. I'd say, awesome. Let's put reminders everywhere that you can focus on that. Because when those, um, that sad event pops up into your life, all right, let's break through it. And one thing I do with my client, I'll share this quickly. I'm not going to share how it works because it's too long a process. But one of the things is, obviously, if we just completely ignore an event, that negative emotion is still attached to it. And that negative perception of that event is still there. Right? So if you got bullied, you'll obviously think of the negative emotions that are, and beliefs that are around that. So like, I'm not worthy. Um, I'm a loser. I have no friends. And whatever you got bullied for, so it might be because you had freckles, it might be because you were hairy, or whatever it was, right? You're going to start holding on to all those thoughts about yourself, okay? And they're going to be a little bit of, you know, a part of your subconscious identity, because we'll hold on to that negative stuff of what people say, because we do care about what people say. As much as people say, I don't care what people say, we, we do. So one of the things I go through with men when we do our timeline therapy is help them shift the perspective, is help them see that event in a different light, because every event that happens in our life whether it's seen as good or bad, you can take both positive and negative. And moving forward to create that, that happier version of yourself and I guess a more fulfilled and uh, inspired version of yourself is to be able to take the good from all events. And I know that sounds fucking cliche and hard to do, but I've been through the process and I've helped so many men with it that I know that it works a treat and I'm not saying you're never going to see the negative again of course you fucking will but if you're able to also see some positive in it as well it makes the event less draining on you and you know obviously if you're holding on to some negative emotions like fear right sadness anger hurt and guilt you know anything like that there can be physiological responses in the body right depression anxiety PTSD um, high cholesterol high blood pressure Right, stuff like that can go on the body just because of the way you channel your energy. So if you can manage to take some positive events, uh, some positive learnings from a negative event and then choose to focus on exciting things you're building towards. And you know, one of the, I was talking to Brad, um, my, my training partner where we're here in Bali. One of the things we're both excited for is obviously we've got the Open coming up. So training towards that and getting to test our level of fitness there is something that we're really excited to focus on. So the more time I spend focusing on what I'm working towards and being present as well, obviously don't, you know, just even sitting here on the side of the fucking, out the front of the villa is cool. Like, you know, you never get to sit here in a, with scenery like this back in Brisbane. So it's cool to be able to sit here and do this podcast right now. So the more you can really focus on just appreciating where you are right now, but also, you know, some goals that you're slowly moving towards, the less time you're gonna to have to focus on that past, the less time you're gonna to have to focus on things that make you feel sad and um, you know, over a long period of time depressed. So if I could give you any bits of advice from my own experience based around that, and obviously you know, it's coming from that event this morning, is that if you've got a negative event that's happened that's, you, know, you keep reviewing and um, it keeps making you feel sad, and if you've been doing it for you know, two weeks, a month, so on and you're starting to feel depressed so for one obviously go seek professional help because there's a lot of great stuff around with you know lifeline black dog institute or you know go check out a a psychologist right but then you can also identify that event try and see what some positives from that might if that's too hard to do without support and without coaching then you know just Understand what have you got coming up in the future that you're really looking forward to? What's a goal you're working towards? And if you don't have a goal, maybe your first goal should be setting a goal. How do you do that? Jump on Google. How do I set a goal? Set a goal for some aspect of your life and then have something to work towards, something that's going to steal your focus for a little bit. Right? Something that if you've got focus on that, you're not going to be able to focus on that sad event as much. Okay. And I want you to focus on trying to be present more, appreciate where you are right now. Because if you're listening to this podcast, you're already fortunate than most people around the world who don't have access to technology. They probably don't have access to clean running water, right? The food we do, the healthcare facilities we do. So consider, you know, we're in a great, great space. 
right? So just to be appreciative for where we are right now. And I know, obviously, depending on what you're going through, it's you might be saying, fuck you, Lockie, that's hard to be appreciative right now. And that's all right. If you want to say that, that's fine. But I challenge you over time to just learn to be grateful for the, the small things because that's what made a massive impact on my life. When I was not feeling like I was successful enough, when I was not feeling like I'd achieved what I should be achieving and needed to achieve, I just started focusing on the fact that I'm fucking in a really good country. I have good people around me. I have access to you know, the fact that I've got an iPhone in my hand that I can share this message with so many people. It excites the shit out of me. Right? And my life's not perfect. And I'm not saying it ever will be, but you can choose to focus on the things that make it fucking awesome. And that's it for me today, guys. But I wanted to share that as I was thinking about it this morning um, after that accident that I saw. So if you got value, guys, once again, please, I love it when you guys are sharing these posts on your social media. Tag me, share what you learned from the episode or what, you, what value or what takeaway you got from it. I'd love it if you could take three minutes to write a review. You know, just scroll down to the very bottom of the podcast and leave a review. That would be fucking unbelievable. As for now, I'm out. A few more days in Bali, so I'm going to make the most of it. Hopefully get one or two more episodes out. Uh, by then, have a great weekend, and we'll update you guys soon. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.